Hey guys, welcome back to the channel with Jason Pizzino on the Jason Pizzino channel. Thanks again for joining me and if you're new, thank you very much for uh, clicking by and checking out some sort of economic, political video that you are about to watch on this channel. It's uh, economic stuff that I rarely, if ever, see out there on YouTube, but uh, it's uh, subscriptions and stuff like that that I'm subscribed to, uh, to do with mostly the property cycle, which is in this case, uh, you know, what the author is talking about is why the, we get continue to get booms and busts. Uh, so yeah, if you are following the channel, you would have seen several of these sorts of videos in the past. It's the subscription, you know, the emails come out. I hope some of you guys have actually subscribed to Phil Anderson's work there now that you've seen it. And this has probably been yeah, over a year and you start to see these things play out and you go back and look at the videos, you see what, you know, I've read out the emails and talked about it in the video. And now 12 months later, you can see what has happened in that time and you start to say, oh yeah, you know what Phil's talking about is actually pretty much on point. I'm not going to say everyone gets it right 100% of the time, but this is pretty much on the money. It's kind of broad. So it's not about like trading on an intraday basis, of course, or a daily or possibly even a weekly. This is more broader, um, more major term cycle analysis, uh, mixing the, anal uh, the fundamental with technical, but we're not going to get anywhere into the, the technical at this point. Um, we're just going to look at the, today's, well, you know, the last couple of days, uh, we've got an, an update from him uh, about how all the property cycle is going to connect. Um, so I'll get into that in just a sec, and I know I've been going on for a couple of minutes now. Uh, first, I just wanted to quickly jump over to a video I did on September 20th, 2017. Um, so we're coming up to one year on that, so it's been, it's been 10 months. And I want to bring this one up because uh, I got a, a message on it one day ago. You can see here from um, Tracy Say Hi. I've got to get a little cursor so you can see where I'm pointing. So that's on my list of things to do. It's the first comment here at the top highlighted. Um, this video was titled, if you're interested, Trump, the greatest president in history. Um, lots of people dislike that. Uh, 32 likes here, 36 dislikes. I knew that would be the case at the time because uh, that was not even a year on since Trump was president. And this stems from one of Phil Anderson's uh, e emails again. And again, he doesn't think anything of any of the, the politicians. The same, pretty much the same view that I've got. Uh, I don't think any of them really see the broader picture like this. They're just doing their job. They're, I don't know, they're obsessed with money, power, whatever tickles their fancy. And that just keeps the cycle going. Uh, people often you know, look at titles and see Trump and then boom, just dislike because that's the fun thing to do is to dislike Trump on the internet. Anyway, the point of this one is uh, 10 months on, um, Tracy put a post here yesterday, it is almost one year since you made this video and I'm more impressed than I ever thought I'd be. I don't know exactly what she means. I've got, I think I've got a rough idea that it's kind of shown uh, from this video what has actually played out 10 months later and I, I think maybe that's why she's impressed and you know, I'm not going to take credit for it. I just really... Um, see the value in Phil's work and I want to put it out there in, into these videos and podcasts if, if that's where you're listening to it. I'll leave a link in the description for the podcast as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I think that's what she's talking about and that's why I've asked, you know, impressed in what way in my comment there. But then I keep, I, I like to go back and read the videos when these comments come up to see, you know, what I was thinking back then, what other people were thinking uh, and then just read through them. And this one here got the most likes. Uh, they probably say the most likes. Yeah, you know, they like to, people like to give you shit. And then when they give you shit, as in the case of Las Vegan, um, probably play on Las Vegas, which you can see there in the picture, when they give you a stab, they don't actually explain the stab. And it's just like a nice little stab that everyone else will like, where they say here, hmm, don't really know if economics and political science are your strong points. And I'm human. I'd like to have a laugh at these people later on because. They've written that post, no explanation. They think they're being smart by writing that and saying, oh, well, to show, oh, you know, you're dumb. You've got no idea. You wrote Trump. You talked about Trump. You talked about cycles, blah, blah, blah. As I said, this sort of information isn't mainstream. Mainstream doesn't want to know about this. Uh, it's, I, I don't know why. It's too much. People love to just think they know what they're talking about when it comes to, I, I'm guessing, you know, they've got to be taught in universities. They're going to be taught how to think and, and what the general consensus is saying rather than thinking for themselves, you know, accumulating other knowledge from elsewhere and then putting that together for your own thought. 
So as you can see there, 10 months ago, all right, why? No response, of course. And then thanks to Tracy's to comment above, um, it made me look back on these videos here. Oh, sorry, it made me look back on the comments. Um, I commented back there because they didn't reply. And, you know, that's just the way it rolls on YouTube, I guess. Um, you know, very easily to comment like this with nothing, is, nothing to support your claim. If you don't believe me, you'll have to research the economic cycles yourself. In fact, I highly encourage everyone to. A great starting point is Phil Anderson's work. I, I bang on about him all the time. And there's the book there, Secret Life of Real Estate and Banking. Let me know what you think once, what you think once you've had a read of this. And so just one hour ago, I posted this follow-up comment um, one year on, all right, 10 months, my apologies. Uh, one year on, and I received a comment above about this video, which led me to check out other comments left on this video back when I first published it. So that's where we're going there. We now see from history that, in fact, the economy did increase substantially. I'm not saying that it's going to go on like this forever. Definitely not. If you look at the work that I've been talking about here and Phil Anderson's and, and other Austrian sort of economists, I think. <laughs> anyway, let's just stick to Phil, what I'm actually reading here. That it, regardless, really, of who's in power, that's the main point here. You know, no one's left or right. It's just this is the cycle. This is what happens then you'll see that the economy will probably go up. Like, we've got no way to prove that, obviously, because Trump's been in and you can't have the two presidents running at the same time and see what would have happened. But looking at uh, the history, if, if the economy runs in certain patterns and cycles, and that generally goes on group things. So regardless of who's in, it kind of sways to that one motion of you know, ups and downs. So going on, um, which it, you know I'm going to lead into today's uh, newsletter or you know the, the email update. This is where this is going. The political space is turbulent as usual. However, there have now been many historic moments uh, had to. So, you know, lots of things have come together in that time. For example, the US meeting with North Korea and North Korea meeting with um, South Korea, thanks to the US. Um, you know, got other thoughts on that? Leave it down below. That's sort of how it looks pretty broadly speaking uh, from what we can see on the internet, uh, you know, from the media. Uh, again, as I outlined in the video, since the 10 month ago video, I'm not saying I personally like Trump. I am talking about cycles in po politics, working with the economic cycles. Lastly, I'll point out that we look to be heading into the top in the market later in 2019. So right now, this is 2000, uh, middle of the year, 2018, after which point we will see a decline in 2020, 2021. Then we rise again into the last part of the cycle, which will lead us even higher in the stock market and other world markets into the mid to late 2020, somewhere around 2026 but we'll know a better time frame as we approach the early to mid-2020s. This is all, as I said, Phil Anderson's work, and he's put together other work, which I've started reading as well, on uh, Henry George. I think there's Homer Hoyt. Um, there's a couple of others, and he makes mention of it in the, the email updates, which I'll move across to now. There we go. That's the larger version, so we've got a nice zoom in. Yes, this is what we're talking about is Phil's work, and then leading on to how all of these cycles connect and the politics and you start to see it play out. And this in particular, which I think I'll try and get through just a bit quicker. I know I always talk about that, but that's what's going to happen. Uh, this is showing how the property cycle starts to get interconnected with other um, areas of the economy, in particular, the tech industry. So, you know, last cycle was with banking. The previous cycle, tech was there again. So it wasn't like a full major cycle of 18 years, but tech was around in 2020, uh, sorry, 2000, 2000. 1999, 2000s. Um, before that, you know, something like banking again back in the late 80s, early 90s. And you can just see how these just, it just keeps rolling around with the property cycle. And that's what the basis of Phil's work is about, is that the booms and busts are related to the property cycles. Other people will tell you that it's got to do with the fiat currency. Um, you know, fiat can be blown out of proportion then to have billions and billions of dollars created, trillions, all that sort of stuff. And I think if we get rid of fiat, then that will stop the cycles. Other people think it has to do with, they think it's to do with business, that it's um, just banking that's the problem. They think it's politics, which is leading to the cycles. And in some small way, it probably is politics because no one wants to change this part of the cycle. And what Phil's talking about here is that all of the gains get accumulated into the land and then it's whoever holds the land. And then the land just gets... Uh, tossed and turned into different industries. And in this case, it looks like we're going into the tech industry. So that is how it's all going to come together. I think reading in, you know, reading Phil's work here and, you know, just putting it together in my own head, he hasn't specifically outlined that, but it looks like there's going to be a lot of tech. They're going to own land and everyone's going to want to have a piece of land, not because of tech, but because prices are going up. But then once everyone has a piece of land and no one's left to buy, 
and there's no one left out there to buy, that's when we get the crash. And because everyone is holding land, you know, the tech industry, which is the biggest, uh, banking, which is also one of the biggest, uh, they're always changing, but I think tech's one of the biggest. Anyway, regardless, those two are massive. They own land. When land starts to fall, those two start to fall. And when the biggest start to fall, then the shit really does hit the ceiling. And then, you know, it all just splats all over the place. And unfortunately, you know, the mum and dad investors, the every other citizens also want to get a piece of land. They usually get it at the, the latest part in the cycle. Everyone just has a bad time when it comes to the end of the cycles is what I'm saying there. So let's go on with this letter here. Uh, Phil is writing to us from Metz in France. He's, um, he's an Australian based out of Melbourne and also, as you can see here, travels between France. I also see him in Singapore, uh, Jakarta, and London. So he works a lot on the British cycle, the Australian cycle, and the uh, American cycle, which basically leads the rest of the world and we follow behind. So as you can see, this was done on the 16th, and I've left it a few days. Long story, I'm, I'm traveling in Thailand at the moment. That's why this sort of weird setup. Uh, let's move on. Chinese real estate companies have been practically buying up the planet as of late, or at least that's how it's been feeling at the moment. But you know this already. You know, we've been talking about it in previous videos. Chinese real estate companies like Country Garden, China Overseas Land and Investment and Dalian Wonder Group have become household names just about. I guess it's to do in the finance industry or if you're in China. Um, you probably know those names. I have not heard of them myself. Apart from Phil's work. Uh, one of the companies, Dalian Wanda, is not presently listed on the stock market. Its owner, Wang Jianlin, is one of China's richest men. Here's what's of interest about that currently. Dalian Wanda Group said that it's getting uh, 34 billion won, so 7 billion Aussie dollars, which would be, what, 5 billion US, 4.5, 5 billion US, uh, investment into its property arm from a group of investors. Dalian Wanda also said that it would strive to take the company public as soon as possible, easing pressure on the conglomerate to meet a listing deadline. Chinese internet giant Tencent Holding, Tencent, I guess, Tencent Holdings is leading the acquisition into Dalian's property arm. Tencent and other e-commerce retail and real estate companies are buying a stake held by private equity investors who were guaranteed annual returns of as much as 12% if Dalian failed to list by September 2018, so a couple of months away from that. Honestly, why is an internet company buying into a speculative property company? So that's where you can start to see that they're all starting to come together. It's all getting overrun, overlapped. That's where this. That's where you can see how 2000 and the, the GFC of 2008 happened. We obviously we know it was from uh, the banking industry, and then you know, patching up all these sorts of uh, uh, there's high risk and, and low risk mortgages. And calling in all the shit ones, good stuff, and then you know who's buying those? Other companies are trying to speculate, so on and so forth. So now we're into the tech. Why is why is uh, internet company buying up speculative property company? The consortium that has been formed to take the stake in Wonders Property Unit includes e-commerce provider JD.com, property company Sunak, China Holdings, and Suning. Sunning? No, it'd be Suning. There's no double N. Commerce Group, a retailer backed by e-commerce giant Alibaba. So I think most of us would know about Alibaba by now. If not, it's a it's like, uh, what is it, the Chinese eBay, Amazon sort of thing. And that's how everything in the real estate cycle, as the cycle progresses, eventually gets interrelated. So that's what I was mentioning before. Obviously, I've read this email and I'm putting it together, piecing it together in my head as well, how it all come together so I can make my own investment decisions. That's why I put these out there. I don't see Phil putting them out there online. Uh, and I would love to have a record of these. It's time stamped with YouTube, you know, going a year like we just saw in the previous email. That's why I repeated that email there, um, you know, the previous video, sorry, and the email, uh, the, the message, and then going forward five years, 10 years, seeing when this other cycle, you know, when we get the peak of the next one, and I can look back in 2018 and be like, boom, you know, Phil was talking about this then. He's investing in it this way. Uh, hopefully we've made some money from it. We keep some money aside, wait for that crash, jump back in and ride that next wave up. So, uh, in this cycle, the new tech companies are fast becoming de facto real estate companies, or at least partly so far. In the example above, Tencent is leading the buying of the 14% stake in Dalian's property units, and this continues to turn the real estate cycle. You can see, yes, you can see, yes, how by 2026, so much of the world will be connected and dependent upon ever increasing real estate prices. So, Phil has been talking about 2026 as the top of the market. Not this one coming in 2019. He's looking at that as a mid-cycle slowdown, which uh, he'll repeat in this email. It's a bit further down. Should history repeat? So that's nothing's guaranteed, 100%. But this is the way he's playing his own investments, and uh, I am also working along this sort of time frame. 
So here's a repeat. We would anticipate the usual final top speculative blast into 2026. Something, if you remember, something like 2005 to 2007, where it was just going absolutely nuts, stock market, property market, everything. This is when everyone in the world will turn property speculator, from taxi drivers, addresses, all the people that you just would not expect to be in property when the going is good, they're in it right at the end of the peak. Uh, property will be doing so well, it will look like the party will never end. I remember that in 2006, 2007, this looked like it never would end. All right, but it does eventually, of course. Going forward, the internet companies will record their surging property profits. Some will become takeover targets. They'll record the property at inflated values in their books. The takeover will be debt funded. So there you go. You can see how this starts to get bigger and bigger and bigger. They're going to be taken over. They're going to be taken over using debt. And then once all of these other companies can't take over the property speculate, the, the speculation companies, who's left to buy? No one's left to buy. Then these loans have to keep getting paid back. The prices aren't going up to repay the loans and boom, we get crash like we haven't seen before. It's always going to be a bigger one than the last because there's more and more money out there and these companies just keep getting bigger and bigger. This is how the real estate cycle builds into the 18.6 year peak we read in the book that I mentioned right at the beginning of the video, all right in front of you. Prepare for it and do the opposite at the extreme. So don't do the opposite now while it's trending. You want to try and do the opposite at the extremes. Trying to pick the turns, basically, but because it's such a big time frame, you have a lot more time uh, to to get the end of the cycle. You're not trying to pick one minute charts, you know, like one minute turns on a on a stock chart or something like that. Uh, but remember, it's the 2026 extreme you have to worry about, not the mid cycle slowdown due after 2019. So that's when he's looking at the top next year, 2019. Then we'll start to slump 2020, 2021. I have a strong feeling, um, obviously, to do with Phil's work. That everyone will think that that is the end, and then that is the time that they'll be fooled. Market will hit a bottom, time to buy up, and then wait for the next explosive move up. Um, yeah, that's that's the way I'm seeing it. That's the way I'm playing it. All right. So here he goes on about the rest of the uh, the issues. So there's a monthly issue, like a bigger one as well. These things just come out um, sort of once a week, twice a week. So there's more to do with the economics and, and how he's bringing together all of these news articles and what's going on out there in the property development world, all across the world and then piecing them all together. That, that's what's in those articles. So it's not just these emails. Uh, I don't often talk about, I don't think I've ever talked about those articles. Uh, sorry, the, um, the monthly newsletters. These are just the, the email newsletters, which are a bit shorter, uh, which I've managed to make longer. I trust you've been getting excellent value from the Cycles Trends Forecast Service. That's what I'm talking about there. All right. Um, through the years, I've been found there are two types of investors, those who study real estate and those who specialize in the stock market. But I don't know, but I don't know too many who marry the two. Uh, I agree. I haven't seen many that do that at all and see the economy through the lens of an 18 to 6 year cycle so he says it's probably around 17 to 21 year cycle that's why we have a better idea come towards you know the early 2020s and you start to see where it will land uh the, the extreme of the market but on average 18.6 now uh, it's the edge you have in the market so he's saying if you have that cycle that's the edge you've got um yeah just goes on to say thank you very much and that's the end of the article there so uh, yeah that's all of it there um Again, I'm going to have to come up with some sort of comment that I put at the beginning to say, rather than I'm trying to make them short, there's a lot that I like to talk about in there, go through these articles. Um, yeah, and at the end of the day, also get your thoughts if you want to put anything in the comments, have a discussion there, and uh, move forward looking at these in history and seeing how well they're playing out um, over the course of the cycle. But yeah, that's pretty much all i got for you there. Rather than drag it out any longer, I will say goodbye. I'll see you at the next video. You know where to catch me. Links are all down below. There is no link to this article. Uh, it's a subscription that I get. Uh, I don't post it anywhere. I just talk about it online here for you in the YouTube videos. But yeah, I've got the Facebook, Instagrams, whatever down the bottom. Check it out. Podcast. And I will catch you at the next video. So until then, thanks again for joining me. Take care. Peace out.